14. Organizational Design, Development, and Culture. This chapter introduces the reader to organizational design, development, and culture. The first section focuses on organizational design. The term is defined and the dimensions of organizational design are discussed. Furthermore, types of organizational structures are distinguished. The consequences of a poor organizational structure are also shown. The chapter then proceeds to organization development. The importance and characteristics of organization development are discussed. We look at the stages in organization development. We focus on the management of change in terms of three steps, namely unfreezing, movement, and refreezing. The last section focuses on organizational culture. The concept is defined and the components and a typology thereof are described. Lastly, the development and change of organizational culture are summarized. Learning outcomes. When you have completed this chapter, you should be able to, one, define the terms organizational design, organization development, and organizational culture. Two, describe the dimensions of organizational design, the types of structures, and the consequences of a poor structure. Three, motivate the importance of organization development. Four, identify the characteristics of organization development and the different subsystems in organizations. Discuss the stages in organization development. Apply a three-phase model, unfreezing, change, refreezing, to change in organizations. Define organizational culture by referring to the components thereof. Explaining a typology of organizational culture. Summarize how organizational culture develops and changes. Organizational design. The terms organization and organizational design will be defined and the principle of organizational design will be reviewed. Definition of terms. An organization can be defined as a system of consciously coordinated activities or forces of two or more persons. All organizations have four characteristics, namely A, a common goal, B, coordination of effort, which is achieved through formulation and enforcement of policies, rules, and regulations. C, division of labor so that workers perform separate but related tasks. And D, a hierarchy of authority, which is a control mechanism to make sure that the right people are doing the right things at the right time. Organizational design is defined as the formal system of communication, authority, and responsibility adopted by an organization which constitutes its internal structure. All organizations have an internal structure by which they operate in order to reach their goals. This structure varies from organization to organization. The dimensions of organizational design. An organization chart indicating the organizational structure is a graphic representation of formal authority and the division of labor. The organizational chart referred to as an organogram provides a pictorial representation of the structural framework of an organization. Terms that are relevant for the structuring of organizations include authority, responsibility, and accountability. A. Authority is a form of power that orders the actions of others through commands. B. Responsibility is an obligation placed on a person who occupies a certain position. C. 
Accountability is the subordinate's acceptance of a given task to perform because he or she is a member of the organization. Authority relationships can be traced on an organizational chart by following the lines downwards. Responsibility relationships can be traced by following the same lines upwards. Organizational structure is characterized by four dimensions, namely A, hierarchy of authority, B, division of labor, C, spans of control, and D, line and staff positions. Hierarchy of authority. The organizational chart specifies who reports to whom in the organization. In this regard, it is necessary to consider the appropriate levels of responsibility and authority to be delegated. Centralization versus decentralization refers to the degree to which authority is retained by higher level managers in the organization. In a decentralized organization, a significant amount of authority and decision-making is delegated to lower levels, while in a centralized organization, a limited amount of authority and decision-making is delegated to lower levels. Decentralization is advocated by those who believe in the empowerment of people. If most decisions are made by managers, employees tend to act as unthinking executors of their commands. The amount of centralization will depend on the size and complexity of the organization, geographical dispersion of activities, and competence of staff. Managers on large organizations are forced to delegate more authority. Decentralization of authority is also necessary when the activities of the organization are geographically dispersed. However, the degree of competence, abilities, skills, and motivation of employees might make it difficult to decentralize authority. Division of labor. The organizational chart indicates who is responsible for what activities. Departmentalization is used to group related work activities into manageable units. Functional similarity can be used as a basis to divide labor. Jobs with similar objectives and requirements are grouped to form a section. The achievement of functional similarity depends on various factors, including the volume of work, traditions, preferences, and work rules, the nature of departments, and the possibility of conflict of interest. If the organization is large, more specialization occurs. Although tasks may be similar, traditions, preferences, and work rules might prevent their assignment to one individual. Similar functions may also occur in different departments. Separation of functions may occur to prevent conflict of interest. Departmentalization can be done based on function customer, geographical territory, or project. Spans of control. The span of control refers to the number of people reporting to a specific manager. The span of control can vary from narrow to wide. The narrower the span of control, the closer the supervision and the higher the administrative costs as a result of a higher manager to worker ratio. Leanness and administrative efficiency dictate wide spans of control. There is no hard and fast rule regarding the optimum span of control. A narrow span of control is applicable when the work is complex, if jobs are interdependent, and if the organization is operating in an unstable environment. A narrow span of control does, however, have some disadvantages. It is expensive because it adds levels of management. It makes vertical communication more complex and slows down decision-making. 
It discourages employees from acting autonomously. To a great degree, the span of control depends on the nature of the tasks which are being performed. If the task is of a routine and repetitive nature, employees need less supervision than in the case of highly complex tasks being carried out. When employees have the necessary training for an experience of carrying out tasks, perhaps even complex tasks, they need less supervision. In such cases, the span of control can be widened. Line and Staff Positions Line managers occupy formal decision-making positions within the chain of command. Staff managers do background research and provide technical advice and recommendations to line managers, who have the authority to make decisions. Line people who are directly involved in the production of goods and services often feel that they are the experts in their own fields and that they do not need or want advice from staff departments. People in staff departments might feel that the people in line departments have too narrow a focus and that they actually need the advice and input from staff departments. Often, top management accepts the advice from staff departments over that of the line departments. It is obvious that the line staff relationship can be a difficult one and one which should certainly be taken into consideration when thinking about organizational structures and organizational design. Types of organizational structures Mechanistic versus organic structures Mechanistic organizations are characterized by less flexible and more stable organizational structures. Activities are specialized into clearly defined jobs and tasks, such as in an assembly line. Workers of high rank typically have greater knowledge of the problems facing the organization than those at lower levels. Policies, procedures, and rules guide much of the decision-making in the organization. Rewards are mainly obtained through obedience to the directions of supervisors and managers. Organic organizations have flexible organizational designs and can adjust rapidly to change. These organizations put less emphasis on job description and specialization. Workers become involved in decision making when they have the knowledge or skills that will help to solve the problem. Workers holding higher positions are not necessarily assumed to be better, informed than workers on lower levels. Horizontal relationships are considered as important as vertical relationships. Status and rank differences are de-emphasized and the structure of the organization is less permanent. The choice between mechanistic and organic structures depends on various factors including the culture in a country and organization and the personality and values of workers. Matrix Organizations The matrix organizational design is characterized by dual hierarchies, a functional hierarchy and a product hierarchy, and a balance of power between these two hierarchies. The responsibilities of the functional manager include recruiting and hiring functional specialists, maintaining their expertise by training, and ensuring that products meet technical specifications. Product managers recruit specialists for each product, ensure that each product is completed on time and within budget, and ensure that functional specialists comply with the product goals. Matrix organizations allow for the good use of limited resources since resources can be shifted between products or projects. Workers gain experience from both a functional and general management perspective. However, the dual lines of authority lead to conflicts, which may result in frustration, anxiety, and stress. This type of structure requires that workers spend more time in meetings. Matrix managers also need to have particular skills. The 
consequences of a poor structure.